The mind is often distinguished from matter in virtue of the fact that it has, or at least seems to have, several properties that are not present in physics. This is what leads to dualism. But if dualism fails, then there are at least some interesting challenges to materialism. The two big ones are qualia, the subjective look and feel of things, and intentionality, or meaning. This video will take a look at intentionality. The word intentionality means to point, aim, or direct towards some target, goal, or end. A better English word for it might be aboutness, when something is about something else. We could also call it meaning. When something has a meaning, it points to a specific target or end. To take a few examples, the word dog refers to or points to its referent, actual dogs. An arrow literally points to whatever its intended reference is, such as a beach. Uh, a picture points to its subject matter. And a thought about, let's say, Mount Everest points to its referent, Mount Everest. So with intentionality, we have a relationship between two items, the pointer, or representation, and the referent, or target, that is being pointed to. There are some peculiar aspects of intentionality that make it a complicated relationship. The relationship between pointer and referent does not to, need to involve any spatial distance. A thought or diagram of Betelgeuse, the star, does not matter how close or far it is to the actual referent. Also, one can contain two contradictory thoughts about the same referent. For example, I believe the morning star is shining, and I believe the evening star is not shining. The morning star and evening star are the same referent, and yet it is possible to have two different and contradictory thoughts about it at once, if you are not aware that they are the same object. In addition, uh, thoughts, words, pictures, and so on can be about things that don't even exist, such as Santa Claus, or perpetual motion machines. So this relationship between pointer and referent is a bit more complicated than the simple physical relationship between two items, and presents some interesting puzzles for the materialist who wants to say that the mind is just matter and nothing more than that. We can look at a few quick reasons to think that intentionality is not a physical property, at least at first glance. For one thing, how can there be a physical relationship between a pointer and a thing that does not even exist, such as perpetual motion machines? How can there be a physical relationship between a pointer and every object of a certain class, such as a thought about atoms in general? The thought points to every atom in the universe that has ever existed or will ever exist. So how can this relationship possibly be physical? Another reason to sp suspect the impossibility of a physical explanation of intentionality is to just look at several of our early examples. The word dog refers to or points to its referent, actual dogs. But in this case, uh, us humans are the ones applying meaning to otherwise meaningless matter. The word dog without us around to assign meaning to the squiggles is just meaningless squiggles that doesn't point to actual dogs any more than any other bit of matter. Uh, an error or a picture uh, only points to its referent because we assign meaning to the picture. Uh, without us doing so, the picture doesn't actually refer to anything. Meaningless gobbles of ink particles don't have anything to do with the Sierra Mountains at all. Computers are often offered as an example of a material system that refers to things all the time, and we are not tempted to be dualists with respect to computers. But is that right? Take an abacus, for example. On an abacus, the beads to the right represent the ones digits, the next column of beads represents the tens digits, and so on. But we assign this meaning to the beads. The beads don't actually mean anything. They're just collections of quarks and electrons whose negative charges repel the electrons in the stick and keep the beads in the column. The bead doesn't refer or point to the number one or anything else. Computers are different in degree but not in kind from an abacus. The computer's display is in English words or numerals which again are created and given that meaning by us. Without our application of meaning to it, the words and numbers on the screen are just meaningless electrons that have nothing to do with anything. Or think about what's happening inside of a computer. Electricity is pulsing in on-off patterns, which mean 1 and 0, the language of computers. But just like with the abacus, we assign this meaning to the pulses of electricity. An on pulse doesn't mean 0 or 1 or 2 or hot dog or anything else. It's just a group of electrons moving along a wire. We choose to apply meaning to it, saying that a pulse of electrons means 1 and an absence of a pulse means 0. But now think about the human mind. Your thoughts represent things. They point to a referent. So if materialism is true, then you thought about Mount Everest would consist of a certain configuration of electrons, neurons, dendrites, and so forth in your brain. Just physical particles and nothing more. But unlike a computer or an abacus, no one is assigning meaning to these particles. So how can meaningless particles point to something without any other mind applying meaning to them, as we do with computers? If we want to say that some subprocess in the brain assigns meaning to our thoughts, 
then this just moves the problem back a step without solving it. If a subprocess is responsible for assigning meaning to the electrons in our heads, then we have to explain how that subprocess can have meaning to be doing the meaning assignment in the first place. This is often called a homunculus, sort of like a little man inside your head doing the processing. But to explain how he can think and assign meaning to things means, means we have to postulate y let yet another little man inside his head, and so on to infinity. This is, of course, an indication that the solution is not viable. So that is the basic problem of intentionality and the problems that materialism has to come overcome in order to try to explain it.